Why do amplifiers have a warm-up period? That's a really good question, and it comes from Tom in Springfield, Missouri. Missouri. Why do amps require a warm-up period before they really sound good? I have a Parasound A21, which was designed by John Curl, who's a very talented designer. And for the first 15 minutes or so, the music sounds rather flat and thin. After 30 minutes, it starts to sound really good, and after an hour, it's delicious. Ooh, I like that. I like that a lot. First, why is this? And second, <clears throat> does this warm-up period have to do with a dynamic load, i.e., while it's playing music? Or can I just turn it on and let it idle for an hour and get the same results? Thanks. Well, Tom, um, and all of you who have wondered about such a thing, let me, let me answer the first part, or the second part first. <laughs> ah, sorry. Um, you don't need to have it playing music. You don't need to even have it connected to get the majority of benefits from running the amplifier uh, as it's plugged in and turned on because essentially what's happening is the capacitors inside the power supply capacitors are forming up to reach a certain kind of equilibrium that caps like to have. But, uh, and that's just a little bit of it. The, the vast majority of it has to do, in a class AB amplifier or a class A amplifier, has to do with the transistors and the output transistors and the bias transistors and the driver transistors. When, when we design a conventional power amplifier, and I don't mean to suggest that your Parasound is conventional in a bad way, right? And just the same as our power amplifiers are not conventional in, in a bad way. It's just as opposed to, a, say, a Class D amplifier. But if we take a conventional, traditional, however you want to phrase it, amplifier, and we were to design it from the ground up, you'd have to picture the output stage as, let's just use transistors because it's the easiest, it's the ones I actually understand. So we have the output transistors, <clears throat> and then in, in, a, uh, in a standard complementary uh, package, we've got uh, what's called a bias spreader. In, uh, in engineering terms, we would call it, <coughs> goodness, um, a VBE multiplier. And what this does is adjusts the heat of and the amount of bias that goes through the amplifier. So an amplifier's heat comes from how much the transistors are turned on and then how hard they're working. So when you first turn your amplifier on, it's going to start idling and, and, and coming up to speed. Okay, the, there's a certain amount of current running through those transistors and that current's going to equate to a certain amount of heat. Uh, now, uh, actually, and as I'm saying that, if you actually started playing the amplifier, it would get hotter quicker. So to the second part of that question, as I'm thinking about it, uh, actually, if you did have a load and you were playing it, it would come up to speed quicker. Won't be better, but it'll come up quicker because you're working the amplifier harder. So I might have to retract what I first said. But in any case, what's happening is as the current is flowing through those transistors, it's generating heat. And that's the bias current, which is what determines the class A-ness of it. So class A being when the transistor is always on, and class B being that it's on only when it's being used, and then it shuts off, OK? And, and I'm not going to go into class A, class AB. We've, we've been through that before. And we'll go through it again, because I always believe that for a subject difficult like that, you want to just say it over and over and over again, not in the same words. And, and by doing that, you'll, you'll help people catch on to what's going on. Anyway, so as the transistor heats up, it starts conducting more, and we get better conduction. And the problem with that as a designer and why we have this what we call a VBE multiplier is that if the transistor gets warmer and it starts drawing more current and it gets warmer and then drawing more current and on and on and on, it'll get into what we call thermal runaway, which we don't want, right? So like the choke on a car where we 
I guess a choke limits the amount of air that comes in and you get more gas, if I remember right. Um, when we first start an amplifier up, we give it more bias current than what we expect it to use when it's operational. So kind of like a choke on a car, for you old timers, we give the, the output stage more current, it heats up, and as it heats up, this VBE multiplier, which is another transistor, also heats up and starts lowering the current. And at one point, we reach an equilibrium where we want to be, where the amplifier is stabilized, where it's at the exact temperature that we'd like it to idle at, and that is where the amp starts sounding delicious. All the metal is heated up, all the transistors are running at their stabilized position, and that's when you hear the best sound. So I hope that wasn't overly complicated and too discombobulated. <laughs> anyway, Tom, it was a great question. Thank you, and we will talk tomorrow. Bye.